welcome back to my channel. My name is Molly, AKA the Bibliophile Blonde. Hello if you're new, if you are old, that sounds bad. If you're returning, thank you. Hi babies, drink some water. In fact, you know what? We're just gonna get hydrated because we are in for a motherfucking ride. And when I say we are in for a motherfucking ride, I mean we are going to be doing a rant, a bit of an unfiltered chat on my current obsession, which is Heavenly Bodies by Imani Aru. This is probably the most recent book to completely captivate my attention and like just suck my soul right out of my body, metaphorically speaking. Maybe literally though, because I'm not sure if there's any part of me left. I'm also not complaining about that, just so we're perfectly clear. I'm not complaining. This book owns me. Uh, Heavenly Body is absolutely fantastic. So I first saw it because it just came up on like my For You page on TikTok and somebody else was promoting it, not Imani. And it was like, a, I think it was just a quote, like one of those TikToks that just has like the sexy quote, like kind of out of context. But I was like, oh damn, like that sounds like something I am interested in. Clickety click, act to cart. What do we do when we're feeling sad? Little checkout button dings. No, but yes, that's exactly what I did because I was feeling sad. And buddy, it fucking helped for a hot goddamn minute. I'm not advocating that you shop and buy books to eradicate all of your mental health issues, but God damn it, it's kind of, it's doing more for me right now than it should. I know that that's not the right answer, but it's doing more for me right now than it should. Also, you're just gonna have to forgive me for the fact that the, there's clouds outside, so the lighting's changing drastically as we talk. That's fine. It's mood lighting. Lean in, gather in. Let's talk about how fucking good this book is because I'm losing my goddamn mind. Okay, lean back a little bit. That was too close. I got this book and I got the ebook version and then immediately it was one of those books that was so good I had to turn around and buy a print version as you can see here and then I spent an entire Friday night and I need you to understand that I have no regrets. No regrets. I spent an entire Friday night re-annotating my paper copy based off of all of the notes that I highlighted on my Kindle. So I went back through on a Friday night with my like Kindle pulled up and then my copy of Heavenly Bodies and every time that I had a Kindle highlight, found it in the book, underlined it and tabbed it. I do not have a color coding system for my tabs. Um, tabs just means it was something that I liked, which is a little chaotic because some of these are like, this quote made me sob for hours and has stayed with me ever since. And then other tabs are like, dick. So, you know. I should start a better, I've actually started a better annotation system for my notes. So like, we'll get there <laughs> eventually, but like for the, for all, all intents and purposes right now, don't worry about that. These are just, it's just every quote that was a vibe. And there were a lot of them. I don't even know if it's coming across as how many there are, but like there were a lot. Uh, let's talk immediately about like big picture stuff. So it takes place in a universe where there are 12, countries if you will that are all ruled by star gods so each country is kind of ruled by a god based on the zodiac so there is ariete based off of aries and then he's the god who runs that kingdom but then there's human monarchs as well so they're gods they are not in charge of the land there's like kingdoms for that so there's there's monarchs so there are each of these 12 places are ruled by a star god but there's a royal monarch ruling family underneath it that does like all of that kind of stuff. So our homegirl, Alara, she is our FMC, our female main character. She shows up because she's on the run. Um, Ariete, who is our villain, I think I can say that without that being like a spoiler. He shows up and basically is like, you know what? I'm kind of bored just being a god. I really want to have my, my fingers in the pies, all that good shit. I would like to run the show so he comes down and basically says like fuck you i am now god and king i am god king cute so she's on the run she ends up in a neighboring kingdom where she strikes a deal for asylum she has um three magical gifts magical powers which are super super potent very powerful but she doesn't know how to use them because plot and she strikes a deal for asylum and the prince of said country has to then train her to use her powers. Let's do a trope count, shall we? Um, force proximity, fucking delicious, fucking delicious. Force proximity. I'm gonna say training is kind of a trope because like we all love a good like training sesh kind of thing. 
Force proximity, training, enemies to lovers. One of the most exquisite enemies to lovers that I have actually ever read in a long goddamn time. Probably the best enemies to lovers that I've ever read. Force proximity, training, enemies to lovers, wound, healing somebody's injured and then it's like oh no my enemy but you're injured i'm taking it like i'm gonna take it like wound tending the tending to wounds <sighs> masquerade balls there's also masquerade balls um not quite a one bed but kind well that's kind of kind of a one bed there's like a one bed situation kind of at the thing um did i mention enemies to lovers and forest proximity <laughs> masquerade balls uh, oh who did this to you who did this to you one of one of like the best like just entire scenes entire scenes of who of who of who have done this to you in a very very long time uh absolutely exquisite fell in love hard our main is Alara, our FMC, our MMC, our male main is Enzo. <sighs> yeah, so he is the love of my life. This, that's important. My three top book boyfriends are Cassian, and this is in no particular order. It's a perfect tie, but my three are Cassian, Court of Silver Flames, Alexis from the Magicians of Venice series by Amy Quiverlainen, and now Enzo from Heavenly Bodies. Like, those are, those are it. Those are it. Those are it. This man, for starters, he goes by the Lion of Helios. So, like, anybody who's fucking, like, you know me and my generals and kind of shit. Anybody who's got fucking, like, I mean, Cassian has all his titles. Now we got Enzo over here as fucking Lion of Helios. I just can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Except I can. And I will. And I will. Thank you. I love this man. I love this man. He's perfect. He can do no wrong. He does a lot of, of, of wrongs, kind of, to be fair. Because, you know, morally gray. Violence. But... <sighs> Anywho, I really don't want to give away too much of the plot because you absolutely need to just jump in and understand. You know enough. You know enough. God's powerful princess on the run, forced to team up in forced proximity with her enemy, who's not really her enemy, who kind of is definitely her enemy, and needs to train her to use all of her powers. There's also an amazing, 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 amazing Greek mythology tie-in. I'm not gonna tell you what the Greek mythology tie-in is, because if I did, it would kind of immediately actually give away the whole plot, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> because it would give away the whole plot if I tell you what myth it is. It kind of like, you just, you then kind of immediately know the plot. Um, so I won't tell you what myth it is, but you do find out that last 15%, it is unreal. It's so, 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 so good. I, I like have not been screaming about a twist in so long. Then you guys, I was losing my mind. I was absolutely losing my mind. Seriously, I was up until 2.30 in the morning reading this book. I do not know the last time that I was like up, cannot sleep, like this is gripping me it's been a minute and this book did it and then I was awake for like an hour after that just trying to process what I had just read like just it's everything it's everything it is tropes on tropes on tropes it is the fantasy adventure romance world building the world building is beautiful it hits in like it gives you all of the tropes and like uh, also like yes it is less spicy and whoo the shit that comes out of that man's mouth, let me tell you. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. I'm fine. I'm not fine. That's fine though. I'm fine with not being fine. So not only does it like, it has all the spice and it has all the tropes, which is like so, 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 so good. It also has an absolute just like architect mastery. Architect mastery. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. I meant that masterful architecture of the plot is just absolutely gorgeous it's so well done one of the best original fantasy plots i've read in a long time so good the writing is just absolutely poetic it is stunning you saw how many of those quotes that i had underlined parts of it just absolutely made me weep like i am still thinking about this book it's been days it's been days i'm just still thinking about this book it's one of those books where I got the ebook, immediately bought the print version, had to annotate the print version, so I had that. I bought a signed copy from Imani because obviously we love fucking supporting our fellow indie authors. Um, and she's gonna be coming out with a second, a second edition of the first one pretty soon that's going to have like an expanded map of the universe as well as another chapter 
from Enzo's point of view. So we don't know what that is yet, but I will clearly obviously also have to buy that. So I'm going to end up with one, two, three, four, four copies probably in the end of this book. And like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I really don't. Um, it's amazing. It literally has everything that you want from plot to fantasy. Like it's, I mean, it's fucking, like you guys know that I love Akatar. I love Akatar so much. Like there's at least eight fucking different versions of that book series up there. Cassian is my number one. Like Akatar, like is one of my favorite things. But like we can all like, ad admit that like Crescent City is better than Akatar plot wise, and so is Throne of Glass. Like Akatar is probably the weakest when it comes to like plot. In my opinion, the best when it comes to characters. But like. Seriously, it's been since fucking like Akatar that I've literally read something and I've been like, this is everything I love. Full stop. Seriously. Um, favorite books of all time include now this, and if you're once you devour this, if you also haven't read Immortal City by Amy Quiverlane, and I think that's genuinely like one of the last books I read before this one, where I was like, oh my god, this has everything I love. No compromises. No compromises. <sighs> that's it. Get the damn book. Read Heavenly Bodies. Come yell at me about how much, how great Enzo is. That's it. That's the tweet. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Leave me a comment down below. Any like, share, subscribe. That does so much to help support the channel. And I appreciate you so much. What a, what a pivot from my rant into my, my closing spiel. Professional. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>